Hey guys, not a painting tutorial today, uh, more of a showcase on my Bretonian themed Space Marines. So a few a couple of months ago maybe I was asked on um, Instagram whether I could do sort of a video blog on the army, the conversion work and obviously the units and I thought it's probably not a bad idea because um, sometimes you can you can express a little bit more audibly than you would on a on a written blog. So I want to go through what I've built. It's been a little over a year now putting this army together so I think there's enough models in the collection to make a video of it. So I want to start with the first model I built which was a bit more, he was a bit of a test model I suppose. Um, he's the only figure in the army without a helmet and I sculpted a, a well it was a green stuff, a um, bit of chain mail over with a, a circlet um, and he, he kind of paved the way for the rest in the in the fact that this is in the fluff of the army, they're allowed to wear their ancestral colours, um, providing the shoulder guard displays the intended chapters half red, half blue. Um, and this guy with the sort of the pilot model, he's exactly that. Now, in the fluff of the army, those um, sort of initiates that didn't have like a family heldr heldry or family coat of arms, they would join the chapter wearing the intended battle plate. So. He, he acts as a, a sergeant um, in the uh, assault intercessors. As for the rest of these guys, I mean, I'm not going to go through all of them, but the helmets are mainly, well, they are half Bretonian and half Space Marine, so whether that one's a good example, we can just about see. The first half, so the front of the helmet and the top of the helmet, is a Bretonian, or in this case, this is an Empire part. And then the back half of the helmet and then the obviously the ball joint that fits into the neck is, is the Space Marine helmet. Um, so that was done across the, the rest of the force. Um, and as far as the shoulder guards are concerned, these were little green stuffed fluid leaves. They get progressively better as the figures sort of go through because my skill at doing it, I think, improved over the year. Um, so yeah, just a few of them, noticeable um, Marines. I said each one is... Um, painted differently, different battle plate. They all use the same five colours though in the army, much like the uh, Bretonian book for Warhammer Fantasy, the, the artwork there, they were mainly all using, was it blue, uh, red, yellow, black and white. Um, some of them I had to convert some head crests. I didn't want to be in a position where I'm doubling up on the helmet mascot too often. So that's a wood elf owl that was put on top of a, another helmet. So yeah, they, they're the Assault Intercessors. Um, the next unit is the... Are they the Hellblasters? I, I forget. Now, much much in the same way, although the Sergeant here has a um, Black Templar torso. Now, the most of the sort of mid-rift is all green stuff, and I do actually have a video explaining how I did this particular model. Um, but yeah, he, he heads up the uh, Hellblasters with the plasma pistol. Um, the rest of the Hellblasters, I did try something a little bit new, or, well, the first time I did something like this, I actually heated up Necron uh, green sticks, you know the old sprue they had, the, I cut the sprue up, heated it up with a lighter, and bent and twisted it, and they were in the plasma guns of my uh, Vostroyan guardsmen, so a few years down the line, I thought I'd try it again, and this is a piece of uh, acrylic rod that I heated over a uh, tea light, because I didn't have to hold the lighter on, and just ever so slightly kept twisting it. Um, and then when I pinned it in place, um, I'm trying to think, this was a Gilliman's glaze, um, this end. This is kind of like as the plastic is normally. And then towards the actual barrel, it was, the, I forget the name. It's the paint you apply, the sort of turquoise color that you would um, put over a rusty surface, like when the copper oxidizes. Um, and the other one is a little bit more impressive, I think, because it's very difficult getting the shape um, needed for these things. Uh, I think of the uh, 30 centimeter long um, acrylic rod that I bought from eBay, these were the only two that I was happy with, so, which is why only two of them have got um, the plasma blasts, although people do joke that it looks like a water gun, but never mind. Um, so yeah, they're the, um, the Hell Blasters. The other one that people quite enjoy, especially when I post them online, was this guy, because he does look a little bit like a, a knight who may or may not say knee. Next up, I think probably be the um, standard unit of Marines. 
And the noticeable sort of conversion here is the unit sergeant again. Let me get the camera focusing in. There we are. Um, so I used an epic scale Space Marine. There we go, just on his wrist. Um, and the idea is there's a hologram. He's talking to someone behind, I don't know, somewhere else. And the hologram appears on his wrist. Camera's struggling to focus there. Let me try. There we are. Doesn't help that my hand shakes as well. Um, now, the reason I, I painted one half of this guy white is because I wanted to have a go at um, painting the glow effect. You know, the, the hologram is, is lighting up part of him and just underneath his sort of gargoyle thing. I used the Hex Wraith Flame, that wash. Um, very lightly kept applying sort of um, washes over the certain areas that would pick up on that light. And the other ones, you've got this guy who I think is pretty cool. He's also carrying a holy hand grenade. Um, the actual fingers, you can probably tell they're not perfect there. They're, it's all green stuff to try and hold the grenade in place. The army started picking up a bit of a Monty Python theme uh, and I kind of rolled with it. But then again, I think, you know, the original Black Templars did as well. That's why there's a holy hand grenade in the um, in the sprue. I think, yeah, those guys, there's not much more to report on uh, those lot. Um, what should we do next? The bikers. So the Outriders were, they were really the, the main reason I wanted to sort of do this sort of army. When I, uh, I was toying with doing a Primaris Space Marine army for quite some time. I didn't really have a good idea and I thought I'd just be painting them like, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a bit of a fan of Blood Ravens, so I might have painted them just like that. But I thought, I, I've, I've done too many armies where it's all just standard. I wanted to have a bit of fun with this. So when I saw the um, uh, the Outriders being released, I thought, actually, this, this could tie into this idea I'm having. Um, now, I've only got three standard Outriders so far. And I've made sure that there's a little signpost for the, the world that was... Um, there, so he's like the unit sergeant. Um, he's the only one actually that has a beaky helmet. I thought with the the eagle um, hood mascot, the beaky helmet might work quite well. Um, the lances are just Bretonian lances pinned straight through the hand. Um, and this particular model, I mean, go back a bit. I tried putting a bit of a um, a homage. Uh, to like the old knights so you've got a rusty spear you've got a broken shield and a horse skull so it's kind of the uh, compare that to the sort of modern equivalent um, I thought that was that was the idea there um, and the last guy he's kind of riding over a, a ruined sort of castle wall um, I'm lucky enough to have an old castle not that um not that far from me, so that kind of gave me the inspiration going around there and seeing like the, the white lichen on the side of the walls and whatnot. I only painted the diamond motif one side um, because <laughs> it's difficult and I can get away with it with this sort of stuff. So they're the, uh, the bikers. As for the other two bikers, you can see I'm not a massive fan of the is it the Invader ATV, the Mario Kart thing? Uh, and when I saw Dark Age Design, who had, um, who had sort of made a 3D print file for sidecars, I thought it'd be perfect. Oh, sorry, it's not in focus again, is that my mistake? Um, so I got, I got hold of the, um, these uh, 3D prints. Uh, if you're in the States, I believe you can order them from Spiky Bits. If you're in the UK and Europe, I think you can get them directly from the guy's Facebook page, and I will link that in the video description. Um, now, the idea here, I was toying with, you know, if, if both knights have different heraldry, you know, do you paint the sidecar a different colour to the, the bike? And I'm thinking, no, you probably wouldn't. It would look like a mess. So I ended up painting the sidecar in the same colours as the, the main outrider. And the passenger, um, as I mentioned sort of earlier, the, the sort of fluff with these guys is the uh, the knights that would sign up those those kids from sort of those you know knightly households that join the, the ranks they would display their family's heraldry where if you were low born and you didn't have a coat of arms you would join up and wear the intended battle plate the um the half blue half red so these guys are like knights errant hence why they haven't got any um helmet mascots and they're painted in the chapters sort of standard colors um but i'm quite happy with these these little sidecars um 
they, they fill the role of the invader ATV in the army. And as for the other one, um, this guy was a little bit more of a challenge because um, I couldn't use the close combat arm on the um, left-hand side. Just trying to make sure I get my left and rights right there. Because um, if he had a lance this side, it would be knocking this guy in the head. Uh, and unfortunately, it's only one bike in the Outrider kit that comes with a combat arm or an arm outstretched to the uh, right-hand side. So for this guy, I made sure he was kind of like bringing the convoy to a halt um, and his lance is hooked to his bike just along the side. The same hooks are actually on the other one, um, but he's obviously carrying that lance. Um, as he is calling the convoy to a halt, I've made sure the the terrain he's about to drive through is very muddy and his, the, the sort of mud on his wheels kind of hopefully reflect that as well. Uh, I do hope all of this is in focus, other than just talking to myself. Um, and this guy, I sculpted um, a little uh, little bit of a Bretonian knight errant head onto a space marine head. I was going to use one of the knight errants um, heads, the, the helmetless ones, but it did just look too small. Um, so yeah, they're the, um, the attack bikes. Um, the other sort of conversion, I suppose, because they're at the front, let me go through the blade guard. Um, the Blade Guard, they are styled to be the army's Grail Knights. Um, and the shields were sort of converted to match. Now they are um, the Stormcast shields. I thought they looked a little bit more medieval than than the Blade Guard shields they come with. Uh, and it's various bits and pieces to make um, the Grails on their shields. I think some of this was, it's a Skaven bell um, with the end of like a spear for the bottom of it. So he's... Um, yeah, he's one of them. The other ones, again, same sort of idea. All sort of use various bits and pieces. I wish I could tell you all of it, but it's mainly sort of bits, box, finds. Um, the grails on this guy's head and the other there, um, they are actually from a doll's house. Uh, and I can't remember the scale off the top of my head, but I know I do record it on my blog uh, if everyone, anyone wanted to do something similar. I um, mean, if you saw the arm move there, there it's not broken. I magnetised these arms on purely for the painting process so I could get behind the shield. Um, but also because of the conversion work, I needed the shield in the right position, but I didn't want to glue the arm on because of the painting. So, yeah, the magnet was the um, uh, the solution. The other blade guard is the unit champion. And I didn't particularly like the shield that was stuck onto their backpacks, but I know I definitely wanted the the sword that he was wiping. So I made this little, you know, conversion of a cherub sort of holding it up that's sort of glued to his backpack so it's, it's there um, now I don't know whether you can see too well the cloth he's using uh, it, it kind of comes back when you look at my the unit the HQ choice but it is a, supposed to be a stormcast tabard you know I, I do hold a little bit of resentment that the fantasy world that I enjoyed was just cemented over to make way with, with something completely different so these guys are getting their vengeance that especially Bretonians were nerfed. They've gone and um, released, uh, dispatched one of the golden heretics, um, which leads me on to, I suppose, the, um, the HQ choice. So this guy, the shield was a major sort of conversion. Most of the front part here is green stuff. And you can see just by his feet, there's a, it's one of these little golden heretics, these people that wield magic. So didn't ask any questions, just lopped his head off. Um, the other bits about this guy is, luckily one of the heads I have actually have a little crown uh, at the top. So I thought that was quite good for the unit champion or uh, not the unit champion, the army's uh, general, he's a prince or you know a king, or whatever it might be, kind of fits a little bit. And he does have a, a holy hand grenade on his belt as well. Um, the other HQ choice is the uh, my first attempt at a green knight. So... I was thinking about it. I didn't want to include any librarians because in the fluff, uh, the Black Templars were heavily involved with the sort of the uh, discovery of their world. Um, and I wanted to carry that distrust of psychers forward. Um, so the HQ choice is the chaplains. I thought maybe they've taken the forest vow. You know, they are the green knight, whether literally or they've just sort of adopted that persona. Um, so he's got um, one of the 
uh, what is it, the Blood Angel Sanguinary Guard. Is it Sanguinary Guard? Because he's got the little grail symbol. And actually that does feature on the um, the grail knights. I've used the Sanguinary Guard shoulder pads. So they've got little grail motifs on them, aside from just their helmets. Um, not really much conversion work. I did do my best at sort of fleur de lis pattern. And my, uh, I had a metal green knight shield in my bits box, which worked quite well. So he's, he's a guy on foot, obviously, and the eagle-eyed amongst you might have spotted another green knight in the background, which I'll get to towards the end. Um, so the other things are the dreadnoughts. This was the first dreadnought I built. Um, obviously, it's the, the easy fit kit there. Um, it's based on my own heraldry, my own coat of arms, which is a, uh, a bull with a spear through its neck. Um, I don't know why. And... Um, yeah, I suppose the other thing here, it took a bit, a bit of time, was the base. Now, I wanted that sort of a juxtaposition of something massive like that defending something so feudal. So I thought if he was walking close or through like a, a farmer's field of crops. So this is when um, grass gets too long, obviously it starts developing like seeds and, and whatnot. And if it's left, it dries out completely, normally by the side of a road or a pavement or whatnot. So I went and collected a few of those Um dropped a bit of super glue at the top so they're somewhat in one piece they're still very fragile and then put some agrax earth shade over them so i thought it doesn't look too bad for for wheat i know the other thing is just using a, a doormat turned upside down or what have you but I, I didn't think that would work for the scale um so i'm quite happy with that guy um the other dreadnought was a little bit more um story driven so when i was sharing some of these um uh, models on a facebook page especially the Green Knight, which I'll show you at the end, I was, they was asked, where's the Black Knight? And I thought, okay, yeah, I know where they're going here, the sort of Monty Python. And I did think, well, if the Black Knight was a Space Marine, he'd be a Dreadnought by now. You know, he's lost both his arms and legs. So this was meant to be the Black Knight. Um, the base is him guarding the little footbridge that King Arthur uh, was trying to cross. Um, and I've made sure the the base litter... So you've got a helmet with a sword straight through it, just like the film, uh, and the the Green Knight from Monty Python that was fighting him beforehand attacked him with a two-handed axe, which you can just about see there. And a uh, now I'm going to get rinsed on the comment section here. A flail, Morning Star. Can't quite remember the difference. I'm sure someone will tell me. Um, the other things he's got scroll work um, at the top, it's all green stuff there, saying "None shall pass," and there's a little mural. I can focus in. There we go. There, so it's a Space Marine shoulder pad cut in half, um, his old helmet, part of a chest piece, sort of um, just there, uh, and a couple of candles made of green stuff and a rose. I thought it was quite a nice little thing. I saw someone do it online. The sword conversion was a bit of a pain. There we go. Can I focus in? So I, I wanted to have him carrying a sword because that's what the black knight used and i've already got a dreadnought with a standard close combat weapon so i wanted to mix it up a bit this is a nemesis dreadnought sword from the gray knight kit um they're very hard to find on ebay and annoyingly this one that wasn't cheap uh, turned up snapped um because they didn't put any um, packaging in the envelope so it's a little bit bent which is annoying because i put it back together again and used some milli putt to join it join it in one piece so I'm a, I'm a bit annoyed about that but it doesn't really notice and other than me pointing it out I'm sure no one would have picked up on it uh, and the plasma cannon I tried something a little bit different um, the hell blasters I had done the plasma getting lighter in the actual coils towards the middle top whereas I saw some people do it the other way around where it was lighter at the bottom um, and I think it looks um, pretty good like that uh, I do this does actually light up with ultraviolet because I use some of the um, fluorescent paints. So bear with me just a moment. Let me go and find my ultraviolet torch. I should have prepared for this. Right, so I don't know how this is going to pick up on the uh, the video here, but let me put some ultraviolet light on it. You just about see it, but it's, it is difficult to pick up on camera. Um, so it does glow, but yeah, it's not, not really not really working. So there we are. But yeah, in in if you if you're here in person, you can see it glow, but it doesn't really pick up on the camera. Um, the base, if anyone was interested, this is uh, how thick was it? I think it was about a five millimeter thickness of cork board 
um, with milli putt over it just to bring the base the, the base up because obviously the uh, the bridge at the back I actually wanted it over some sort of like small ravine. So that's the Black Knight. That's the other Dreadnought. Uh, and then the final model that's probably worth going through is the actual Green Knight, as in Warhammer Fantasy Battle Law. This was a mammoth undertaking, um, but I'm pretty happy with the end result. So if any of you have a Bretonian army book from the last edition, the Green Knight artwork is um, the Green Knight leaping over a, a root bundle of a tree, um, and there's a poor sort of like... Uh, man at arms or knight about to be um, got by a few beastmen and you're thinking he's just got there in the nick of time so I thought it'd be awesome to try and replicate this from a 40k point of view where the the knight is a guardsman and um, the green knight is on a motorcycle and the beastmen are actually from the Blackstone Fortress set so and um, there is a blog all about the construction of this build um, it's MDF bases to fit um, this. I was thinking about doing it all on one big base, but then I thought if I ever want to play a game, um, I want the Green Knight to be able to come out so I can use him, and then that is on a standard base. Um, so yeah, I'll try and uh, leave a few links in the description for the construction of this, as well as a link to the blog for the rest of this army if you ever want to have a look at some still images, just in case my camera work here is shoddy. Um, the main tree was built out of copper wire and um, milliput. And there's a few little Easter eggs hidden. I've made sure his rifle's down the side here and he's got his little uh, man's best friend hiding away. Um, and just at the foreground, hopefully we can see. There we go. It's a bit difficult. The canopy's making it quite dark. You've got a dead beastman that he's dispatched. And then he's thinking, oh, I've got a few more to go at now. And then just in time, you've got the Green Knight. So let me put this down. I'll show you the bits in pieces. So the Beastmen, as I said, they're from the Blackstone Fortress set. I could have converted some 40k Beastmen um, out of the initial set, but I thought these already exist, and I thought it would be pretty cool to use uh, official 40k Beastmen models. Enough about those, they're heretics. The base, as I said, it comes out um, so it can be a diorama or I can use the model in an actual game not that I've played a game I'm trying to think of the last time I actually played it was when it was my Imperial Guard the last time I played a game of 40k, 40k and it was just after the Knights were released so it's probably a while ago um, and yeah there we go that's the, the actual green knight so the bike had um, the brass etching the leaves put along the side to sort of detail it up I had to sculpt a new Green Knight Shield, because I stupidly used the metal one on the foot version. There we go. The arms are from the Blade, Ri um, Blade Rider, the Blade Guard set. Um, I, I like the, and this is another part of the conversion, the spare biker I had, his hand was on the right handlebar. But of course, in the artwork that I'm trying to replicate here, um, it was the other way around. So the handlebars are actually the sword hilts from the Blade Guard set, um, and that arm exactly is, is, is that. And then the outstretched sword I thought was pretty good for the pose. Um, the headpiece is actually the tail of a mechanical steed from the old Empire range. Uh, I, I have two of them and I was loath to cut something off because I thought they're so good. But uh, yeah, I just thought the, the part was too fitting for what I wanted to do. Uh, and then the guardsman here, who's sort of in fear of his life, it's made from Cadian bits and um, quite a bit of green stuff. Uh, as I said, you'll probably get better photos of him uh, still um, on the blog that I'm going to link. So, yeah, hopefully um, you've enjoyed this. It's a bit of a new thing for me to do, to actually showcase the armies that I've put together like this. And hopefully if I do anything else to this sort of extent, um, I can do sort of follow-ups. I don't have any plans for this army now it's kind of been parked it's not to say that i won't come back to this let me get some focus again uh, yeah it's not to say i won't come back and do any more from this but I, I have kind of run out of ideas so rather than force stuff i'll wait for something to come to me naturally i do want to create one of those um 
now the name escapes me. Is it the the war suit where the the vanguard marines sit in? So it's like a dreadnought, but the guy isn't actually dead. I thought that would be quite cool to do, just like I've done with the Black Knight. Have a sword and maybe a massive shield, but I haven't really got the parts to build it. So that's kind of on the back burner of ideas. Um, but for now, um, that's what I've got. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and um, you know, with any luck in the next few uh, weeks, I'll start putting some uh, more painting tutorials out. But thanks very much for watching, guys. You take care.